Hi guys and welcome to this the third video in the Matrices series for Further Maths Unit Stream 4. I'm Darren Maths Guru. Really good to see you. Hopefully you are returning. Uh, if you're new, it's really, really good to see you. Now, matrices are, actually, believe it or not, really, really funky. They're also incredibly simple if you can get the language and the notation down. Now, my first video got through all the language and notation. The next video was talking about how to apply it in real world. If you haven't seen those videos, why don't you head back and uh, look over them. Now, as I say, if you are new, give me a favor in the corner. There's that little doohickey. It's a subscribe button which will actually just tell me you're watching. I'm never gonna be rich. I am never gonna be famous. No one really wants to watch mass videos. Um, so why am I asking you to click it? Just to let me know you're watching. Uh, it's weird sitting in here talking to myself. Um, so knowing that people out there are occasionally watching these makes it all worthwhile. And above me is a link to massguru.com, my website where all of these videos are sorted by textbook, by chapter, and have downloadable notes. So why not head over there and see what you can find? Um, could be the best thing you've done, at least in the next hour. So, uh, matrix arithmetic, addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication. <laughs> scalar, yes, Barry's been added again, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. I'm going to teach you in this video how to add and subtract matrices and multiply by a single value. Uh, believe it or not, it's relatively quick, relatively simple, but there are some tips and tricks uh, that uh, you need to be aware of. So, let's have a look at adding matrices together. Now, before I do that, I need you to just recap and be very much aware of um, what an element means, all right? And how many elements there are and also order. So if you remember an element, for example, that is an element. It is labeled as A23. Notice the lowercase a, which is very much a reference to the fact that it means matrix, capital A, and that underscore, that underscore 23 does not mean 23. It means the second row and the third column. And let's just check, yes, the second row and the third column where they intersect is in fact the number six. Now that's really, really important. What is the order of this matrix? Well, the order of this matrix would be four by four. And again, orders of matrices become increasingly more and more important between this video and particularly in my next one. So how do I go about adding matrices together? Well, can I add these two together? My answer is actually no. To be able to add matrices together, the first thing is they have to be the same order. Because you can only add or subtract matrices by doing the same elements in each one. So you add the same elements in each one, you subtract the same elements in each one or in each matrix. But because, for example, this has an element and this has an element, yes. So what I'm saying is because this is the element uh, 1, 1 and this is the element 1, 1, I can absolutely add those together. What's this element? Uh, 2, 1. That's element 2, 1. Add them together. This element. 3, 1, yep, 3, 1, but now I have a problem. I have nothing to add this to. So that's why they have to be the same order. And I'm going to put a box around that so that when you download, you understand what I'm talking about. So no, but we can add these matrices here. Now, when you add matrices, your result will be the same order as the matrices you are adding. So I already now know that because they are all two by twos, so that's a two by two, and that's a two by two, my answer will also come out as a two by two. And from now, it's the same as I said before, you add similar elements. So you add that to that, All right? So you can say in that situation, the top left corner of both of them will add, well, one plus four is five. Then what do I do? I can now do uh, two plus five, All right? So I'm now at the element one, two for each of those and adding those together, which gives me seven because two plus five is seven. I do three plus one, gives me four, and finally four plus three, which gives me seven as well. And lo and behold, that's adding these things together. We can also subtract them by doing exactly the same thing. The first thing you need to check is are the orders the same? Two by two, two by two, they are. So that tells me that my answer is also gonna come out as a two by two. Now, subtracting, same as adding, but subtracting. So now we're gonna do one minus four. E -e -e -e, negative numbers, but they are people too. They're not, but it seemed to fit for that particular moment. Next one, two minus five is minus three. Three minus one is two. And four minus three is one. And ladies and gentlemen, adding and subtracting, you're done. There's nothing more to it than that. Here's an example taken from the Cambridge Further Maths Unit 3 and 4 textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge. You've given me permission 
to use your examples and I am deeply, deeply grateful. Your textbooks absolutely rock with some phenomenal questions. The following example then says find A plus B. Well, we can do that now. So I'm going to write this out as 230142 and I'm going to add that to 123 2 minus 2, 1. Now, I'm not going to keep highlighting them. Um, I'll do a few of them, but just remember elements and elements. This element and that element match. Add them together, it gives me 3. We move across that element and that element. 3 plus 2 gives me 5. And then finally, 0 plus 3 gives me 3. And I can now do the bottom row. Now, notice again, I tend to work along the rows first, and then, you know, it just makes life easier. So 1 plus 2 it gives me 3. 4 plus minus 2, 4 plus minus 2, a plus and a minus is a minus, so that's 4 minus 2, which gives me 2, and 2 plus 1 gives me 3. Job done. There we go, nothing more to it. The following example is now asking us to subtract said matrices. Well, yep, write it out, 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 2. This time subtract 1, 2, 3, 2 minus 2, 1. Are they the same order? I should cocoa, so in which case, subtract them. Yes, and so 2 minus 1 is going to give me 1. 3 minus 2 is going to give me 1. And 0 minus 3 is going to give me minus 3. So that's that first row with highlighting. Now let's do the next one without. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. 4 minus minus 2. 4 minus minus 2 is the same as 4 plus 2. So that's going to give me 6. And 2 minus 1 gives me one. And there we go. Subtraction. Love it. Primary math, really. Okay, multiplying by a scalar. Now, Barry, 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 why can't you just say multiplying by a number? Scalar, nothing more than saying a number. Just leave it at that. Nothing more to worry about than that, really. When you multiply a matrix by a scalar, it is incredibly easy. Now, I've got an example here, but I'm going to talk about it first. If I have the numbers one, two, three, and four, and let's call that matrix P, for example, then if I want to multiply that by a scalar, then I would reference that by 4P. Right? So very much the same way. That's not a little P, by the way. Let's still make that a capital P. It's very much like you did at school. You know, if I told you that X was equal to 3 and you wanted 4X, then you just did 4 times 3. Now, the problem with this is how do I do 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4? Well, basically, the shortcut, or the, well, it's not even a shortcut, it's the way, every number inside that matrix gets multiplied by what's outside. So I'm going to multiply 1, 2, 3, 4 by 4. So 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, and ladies and gentlemen, that is multiplying by a scalar. Every element inside that matrix gets multiplied by the number. Easy peasy. So we want to find 3a. So 3a is the same as 3 multiplied by 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 2. Every element in that matrix gets multiplied by 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 0 times 3 is 0. Please don't think it's 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. And 3 times 2 is 6. And ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Now, trying to trick me, they want 0.5c. Now 0.5 is just the same as saying a half of C. And bearing in mind I want C to be 4 minus 4 minus 2, 6. It's just asking you to half each of the numbers inside that matrix. So 4, half of 4 is 2, half of minus 4 is minus 2, half of minus 2 is minus 1, and half of 6 is 3. The zero matrix. Uh, now I'm being a bit honest here, possibly one of the stupidest things I've ever heard of. I'm sure it's useful, but anyway. The zero index uh, matrix is basically a matrix filled with zeros. It can be any size, doesn't matter. What is more important to know is that it has a capital O as its describer. So if you ever see a capital O, it's trying to trick you. It means the zero matrix. And I've given you three examples there of a zero matrix. Believe it or not, Cambridge massively came up with an example. So I respect to you guys because I wouldn't have been able to. But here we go. Show that. 3g minus 2h equals o, not 0, o, as in the 0 matrix. So 3g, so I've got g is 6, 0, minus 4, 2, and I want 3 times that. And I'm going to take away 2 times h, which is 9, 0, minus 6, and 3. Well, the first thing I need to do is the multiplication. 
Can't take them away until I do that. That's order of operations. So 3 times 6 is 18, 0. 3 times minus 4 minus 12. 3 times 2 is 6. I'm going to subtract from that. Two nines are 18. Two zeros are 0. 2 times minus 6 is minus 12. And 2 times 3 is 6. And now are they the same order? They are because I've got a 2 by 2. That's a 2 by 2. My answer is going to be a 2 by 2. And so 18 minus 18 is 0. Remember, all I'm doing now is the same elements take away from each other. 18 times 18 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Minus 12 minus minus 12 is minus 12 plus 12, which is 0. And 6 minus 6, oh, look at that. So therefore, I've shown that. Now, when it says show that in an exam question, it actually wants you to show you're working out step by step by step. If you don't do the show, if you don't do your working out, you won't get any of the marks. And believe it or not, a CAS can do this for you as well. So firing up my CAS, let's do main and let's bring up my keyboard and we'll go to math two. Because in this uh, wonderful world we're in, it makes life easier to actually just put that into my memory. So I'm gonna hit this little uh, arrow sign there. Then I'm gonna go to ABC and I'm gonna put it into, not Z, I'm gonna put it into memory A. There we go. Now we don't say okay. If the matrix comes up, it means it's okay. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put in another math two. So what I want, another one of those matrices. Thank you very much, back, back. So we've got one, zero, and mine, uh, sorry, three. And then the next one, we go down and the right, right, or left, left. Two, minus two, and one. And in this situation, I'm gonna put it into a different memory or a different register. It sort of makes sense to call it little b because that's what it is there. My fingers are obviously way too big for this. And there we go. Right, so what does the question ask me to do? A plus B, I simply now do A plus B, hit enter, and out comes the value. So for A plus B, the answer is three, 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 two, and three. I could check that by hand, but I'm not going to. Next one is A minus B, so there's A minus B, enter, and that's gonna give me 1, 3, minus 3, minus 1, 6, and 1. See how easy this is. Brilliant to put it in the memory. And C, again, we're going to do 3A. So 3, I'm going to put times A. My advice is to put the times A in or put the times sign in. Um, I'm not sure what would happen if you didn't, but I know that sometimes calculators get a bit funny because they don't realize there's a time sign between it. So there's enter. And what do I get? Uh, 4, 9, minus 6 minus one, 16, and four. So using my CAS calculator is fine. I can do all that hard work. Yes, what does this have to do with real world examples? Okie dokie. Well, the whole point of using matrices is to apply them to real world. So the sales data for two U cars dealers, Honest Joes and Super Deals are displayed below. Construct two matrices, A and B, to represent the sales data for 2014 and 2015 separately. So they're telling me I want a matrix for this and a matrix for that. So here is A. That's going to give me 24, 32, 11, 32, 34, and 9. And then we've got small, medium, large. We've got Honest Joes and Super Deals. And B, same, same. We're going to do 26, 38, 16, 35, 41, and 12. And same, same. We're going to do small, medium, large, Honest Joes, and Super Deals. There are metric matrices A and B. Construct a new matrix C. A plus B. So C is going to be equal to those two matrices together. Let's see if we can do those in our head because I'm just adding some numbers together. So 24 and 26 gives me 50. 32 and 38 gives me 70. 11 and 16 gives me 27. Close the bracket. 32 and 35 gives me 67. 41 and 34 gives me 75. And 9 and 12 gives me 21. And there we go. And it says, what does the matrix represent? Well, when you're adding together the sales from uh, whoever it was, 2014 and 2015, it's the total sales. So these are the total sales for Honest Joe and Super Deals for small, medium, and large cars. Construct a new matrix D, which is B. Whoops. <laughs> so we want D, which is B minus A. Okay, so B minus A, let's shrink this down a bit so I can see two of them in there. So we are now gonna do B minus A, so 26 minus 24. Remember, I'm doing this, 26 
minus 24. And you guys could absolutely write this out. Uh, it's totally up to you to write it out and then it probably make it a bit easier to see. So 26 minus 24 is two. 38 minus 32 is six. 16 minus 11 is five. 35 minus 32 is two. 41 minus 34 is seven. And 12 minus nine is three. And it says, what does that represent? Well, again, this is gonna be the difference in sales between each of the years for each of the car brands. So we've got small, medium, and large, and we've got Harry and uh, on Aries and Super Deals. Basically, what this now shows is for this situation here, that uh, Honest Joe sold five more large cars in 2016 than he did in 2000, and, oh, sorry, 2015 than he did 2014. Both dealers want to increase their 2015 sales by 50%. Construct a new matrix E, which is 1.5 times B. Now, hopefully you guys are remembering about multipliers. If we have an increase of 50%, that's 100%, plus the 50% gives me 150%, which we can turn into a decimal multiplier by dividing by 100, which gives me that 1.5. So there's, that's where the 1.5 comes from. So we're going to say uh, 1.5 times whatever B is. So this is E is going to be 1.5 times whatever B is. And there we go. There is uh, B uh, extracted and I'm probably going to do this on my calculator. Saving you guys the heartache of actually having to watch me enter that and fumble around with my fingers on this very, very small keyboard. I'm going to go and put that in to, uh, no, I'm going to put that into E because that's what it wants me to do. There we go, E. And how can I do this? Well, I just do 1.5 I'm going to multiply it by E, hit enter, and there we go. We end up with 39, 57, 24. Now 52 and a half, I'm going to round that to 53 because you can't have half a car. 61 and a half is 62 and 18. Now, one of the great things about this course is you've got to think about what you're actually writing. And although the textbook seems to suggest that you are going to have half a car, I don't necessarily think that makes any sense. So I'm going to round those up to make sure that we've increased by 53, uh, or we got 53, 62, and 18. And if voila, there we go. There's the end of this particular lesson on addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication. The next lesson deals with multiplication, multiplication, and it is awesome. Uh, but strap yourself in. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below and let me know that you were watching and enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't already done so, if you can subscribe, that would be great. Uh, again, lets me know that you're watching. Otherwise, maybe I'll see you in the next video, which will be loading soon. All right, take care of yourselves. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.